One of the most important medical problems worldwide is the rise of infectious disease. And at UW-La Crosse, as a medicinal chemist, I'm working to design and build new drugs uh, that will combat infectious disease and that will ultimately save lives. I'm a professor of biology, and I teach general biology, ichthyology, aquatic toxicology, basically look at the bioaccumulation and effects of different contaminants on fish in, in different aquatic ecosystems. I'm a professor in the biology department and I teach the human anatomy and physiology series and uh, an endocrinology class as well. UWL offered me the best of all worlds where I could um, really excel in teaching and learn about more about teaching and becoming a better teacher as well as stay involved in research. I'm an associate professor of microbiology. I'm an environmental microbiologist so I study microbes out in the environment, how they interact with the environment, how they break things down in the environment, potentially someday to look at perhaps their use in bioremediating, that's cleaning up sites by breaking down pollutants that we've released into those environments. I'm a professor in the Department of Microbiology, so my area of specialization is food microbiology. So I primarily work with uh, lactic acid bacteria, so these are the bacteria involved in making cheese, yogurt, and buttermilk, and those type of uh, uh, products So that Wisconsin is known for. I'm a professor of physics and my research interests are into uh, trying to detect single photons of light using nanotechnology. Basically what nanotechnology is, is trying to use things that are very, very small to do something that's technologically relevant. Fifty years ago, when Cali Hall was conceived and built, science education was vastly different than it is today. Fifty years ago, we taught about the basic process of science, about basic discoveries in science, and active engagement in science was really limited to graduate education. Today, we expect and really need to have undergraduates actively involved in doing science. As a matter of fact, many of our students are doing original science. One of the real strengths of the sciences that we have at UW La Crosse is the strength of the leadership that we have in these programs. For instance, the chair of the physics department, Dr. Gubi Sadakran, initiated a program where we bring in a Nobel Prize winner in physics every year to give talks on campus, to interact with our students and faculty, and to uh, visit the classrooms. And it's just something, a uh, really neat interaction between the Nobel laureates and our students. I think the most inspiring thing for my undergraduate research students is to give them projects that they can own uh, that no one else in the world has ever worked on before. So we have students uh, making new inventions and new discoveries right here in our laboratories in Cowley Hall. In my lab, students are running chemical reactions uh, on a daily basis, uh, and to do this we require uh, great ventilation, excellent plumbing, uh, and, and a safe working environment. And I really haven't had any of those things since 1995 when I moved in there. Any day when you walk down the hallway, you never know what you're going to see. For example, if there's a pouring rain outside, that means somebody's going to have towels under some of our windows because the windows leak. In fact, the ledge of my office, I keep a towel on it because rain comes in when it rains. There's a picture of me next to a large funnel and bucket in the research space to protect um, my lab space from the massive incoming water during the rain, and we just do what we have to do to get work done. Well, it's ironic, actually. We have all this high-tech equipment, some of the stuff that we've spent half a million dollars on, and we're using towels to stop rain from coming in. In fact, there's a colleague on first floor that water runs through his office and he puts towels under his door to block it from going out into the hallway. If you walk into the laboratories in Cowley, what you'll see are, you know, multiple students piled up on top of each other at the desks and at the research benches. You'll see uh, broken tiles coming up off the floor, paint falling off of the ceiling. Uh, you'll see a, a, really an ancient facility. walk into our lab, it's, it, first of all, it's going to be very crowded. Um, there are five graduate students working in there right now, and I would say the size of our lab is similar to um, maybe your bathroom or a large walk-in closet. And you'll also see some things that might make you go, hmm, 
Um, for example, there are pipes that are sticking out all over the place, um, ends that are just kind of capped off and corroded, and um, you can see big holes in um, underneath our sink especially. Um, you see a lot of problems with um, the electrical outlets sometimes. We can't get them to work and then we have to have the maintenance men who are really great. They, they always come and try to help us out, but it's a constant battle. We have to cobble things together to, to get certain pieces of equipment to work. Uh, the, the ventilation is terrible. We, we find ourselves opening windows to uh, let the toxic fumes out of the teaching and research laboratories at different times. Uh, it's, I think it's a safety hazard and I think many of us are almost afraid to work in there. When you walk in my lab, uh, it's an L shape, and so the first part is literally just a hallway that's lined with um, some cabinets and such. And it actually functions as a hallway as well because we have students going through it all the time to get to the dark room and get to the next lab. And so it makes it very hard to really accomplish any work in that area. I think the biggest thing about getting students to come here is we really have to almost distract them from the facilities. We have to sell them on the quality of education, the quality of the work being done, uh, the experience that they have, and we really have to sort of distract them from the uh, shape of the facilities. We have to tell them that even though the facilities don't look very good, uh, it's really amazing work that gets done here. Well, we're able to, to attract new faculty hires because we have a great existing faculty. We have people passionate about teaching and research and we work very well together here at UW-La Crosse. The difficulty really lies in walking them down the hallway and showing them uh, where they're going to have to work and where they're going to have to research for the next several years. I'm really frustrated right now because I'm having so many problems with my cell culture. We've worked very, very hard to produce large amounts of virus for my influenza project and I just can't do it because the conditions are not right. I, there's a lot of contamination because of the bad airflow. There's problems with the water supply. There's problems with things leaking and I, it just, it's very frustrating for me to get good results that I want to produce when I don't have the right conditions. I think we owe it to our students uh, to provide them with the best educational experience and that includes a modern, uh, safe environment in which to work and study. What excites me and makes me most happy in the classroom is seeing students struggle with something and finally getting that aha moment where they really are excited about something and feel that sense of accomplishment. Well, I hope my students would say that I supported them and, and pushed them to their limits uh, and actually taught them something and, and provided them with some skills that are valuable that they can use uh, to have successful careers of their own one day. One thing that gets me really excited about my teaching is to see this, the light bulb go on in the student, the, the so-called aha moment, when they actually grasp the idea, grasp a concept that they struggled with before. And one of the best ways that we have to do that is actually not telling them about the science, but actually engaging them in the science, having them make the, those discoveries for themselves. I love what I do. I love working with the students. We have an amazing student body that comes through here. I have a great set of colleagues. We're like a family. We agree about the important things. Um, we have a lot of the same values, and that's very, very important to me. It is my hope the students that work with me in the lab take what they've learned in the lab and apply that to whatever they do in life and to keep in mind that a big change can come from one small step. Our faculty, students, and staff clearly bring so much passion and dedication to their work and that is so exciting for me uh, to see. But by the same token, I'm mindful of the fact that they need a facility where they can do their best work and maximize their potential because that's the way they're truly going to change the world.